Hello again, welcome back. This is Evan's Fasting Vlog, Day 7, and I'm Evan. <laughs> well, it's been another beautiful day here at True North Health Center, and I am really in awe of this place, and I have uh, written the check for a significant donation to the True North Health Foundation because I really believe in what they're doing here and what they are helping to contribute to our human family to really help us find true health, healthy health, honest health, health beyond what any of the medical schools are teaching the doctors to tell us, health beyond any of the pharmaceutical companies giving us the pills that are supposed to be the panacea and magic cure-alls, and the health where we don't need doctors where we don't need hospitals, where we don't need pharmaceuticals. And it's a beautiful thing. And I must admit, of course, at the same time, our culture is immersed in unhealthy activity. And hopefully they're just gonna continue making inroads and influencing people and that eventually our culture will evolve to be one that supports health. And I always say the only thing standing between us and the life of our dreams is the support enough to get there. And this is a hostile environment in which we live, the sad standard American diet. Uh, you can't run a restaurant unless you sell salt, fat, and sugar because people won't like it, they won't come back, and you'll close. You literally cannot run a truly healthy restaurant. It doesn't exist can't do it. So it's, uh, it's a very special thing being around people who really get it and they care and they're committed to living their lives this way. Dr. Goldhammer, 100%. He's my hero. He's amazing. I have so much respect for him and uh, I'm just in awe being around him and seeing what he's created here. The staff are wonderful. Everyone here is so warm and friendly and attentive and everyone loves being here and nobody seems to mind doing their jobs from the housekeepers to the kitchen staff to the office staff to the nursing staff. People come here and intern like crazy. Nurses, doctors, medical assistants, they intern here. Some spend six months here volunteering their time uh, for no more than room and board, they make rounds and help take care of all the guests slash patients slash students. And um, it's a beautiful thing. All these people evolving and learning about health and getting a handle on their, their habits and learning about the pleasure trap and what a trap it is and how stuck we are and what a hostile environment it is around us with all these temptations and all these people around us who are indulging and it's very very difficult to stand your ground and, and adhere to your commitment to stay healthy when everyone around you is eating the stuff that we now know from what we've learned uh, is causing the chronic epidemics of um, disease and metabolic conditions that are just taking the lives of our loved ones and, and robbing them of living while they are still alive. And he's very blunt and to the point, but Dr. Goldhammer gets it on a deep level and he's committed. And you see that guy eat mountainous plates of food every day of salads and lots of raw and absolutely healthy. No sugar, no oil, no salt in anything they make here. Whole foods. It's, it's really, really a, a sight to behold. And the, the people who are here, uh, the guests are so social and so wonderful. And they're really committed to doing something drastic to take care of their health and get a handle on their habits. And they're learning. There's constant lectures and, and educational opportunities for everything from cooking demos to lectures from those who have written the books that are available in the lobby and um, the in-house doctors make presentations and the like associated doctors and psychologists the psychology work here is very powerful cutting edge super high level brainiac kind of like neuroscience literally psychology and uh, people like Heidi Crockett and Doug Lyle 
are just giving powerful presentations all the time here and I'm just blown away. So almost a little too much so literally, but I'll get to that in a minute because when you're fasting, it's a lot to take in. You're not putting glucose in the brain in big quantities like when you're eating. So you're on low energy already and, and the brain is 25% of the energy of the body. So when you're putting your brain really focused on these intense lectures, it can be a bit much. It actually got to me a little bit yesterday on day six. So I didn't make a day six video and there wasn't too much to report. Uh, and I wasn't feeling that, that great, wasn't too bad, just a little kind of crampy in the stomach and overwhelmed, like an overdose of information. Uh, but I loved the information and I couldn't leave the lecture, Heidi Crockett. I just love Heidi Crockett. She's written two books, check them out. And she's a psychotherapist. I talked with uh, a woman today, a new friend here, who had a session with her and she said it was amazing. She just gets right to the source of your issues and cuts to the chase and tells you what's going on and really helps you work through it. So, and I'm not surprised. Uh, I'm, I've really been impressed with Heidi and recommended a few books to her that she actually hadn't heard of, which, which uh, wasn't too surprising. There are billions of books out there, but these are really, really, really good ones that I thought she'd want to take a look at. Uh, if anyone's interested, they are Leonardo's Brain, Positivity, I'll give you the author, Leonardo's Brain by Leonard Schlein, nice ring, Positivity by Barbara Fredrickson, and The Bisexual Option by Fritz Klein. She is also a sex therapist, and I said, you don't know The, the Bisexual Option by Fritz Klein? He is the one who took the, the old Kinsey scale, that's where you rank your sexuality on a, on a one to seven scale, totally straight, totally homosexual, and totally bisexual, and somewhere towards one or the other. And um, he took that scale and just blew it up in multiple dimensions and made a lot more sense for people than just, well, I think I'm a three or I think I'm a five. He really helps you take a, a cold, hard look at, okay, what have you actually done? What do you fantasize about? What's your social network? You know, what do you socialize with? How do you identify yourself? Uh, what have you done in the last year? What have you done over the course of your life? So really takes a look through time and space and situations to determine your sexuality um, more take a deeper examination of it um, and get more specific. So uh, I recommended those to her and it was a lot of fun and uh, she was really, really enthusiastic and interested. Just great people across the board. So super, super happy here at True North Health Center. Support them and their foundation and uh, I couldn't recommend it any more highly. It's not a luxury hotel resort, that's for sure, but I think quite reasonable for what you get. It's a lot of shared accommodations, so basically, in most cases, unless you take a whole apartment, you have a room in an apartment with roommates and share the living room, public space, and everyone seems quite happy with that. And uh, I'd say more people are fasting here than not, but some people just come here and eat the healthy food and go to the lectures and the cooking demos and sit outside in the sunshine by the fountain and just soak it up. So, now then, let's get to the nitty gritty. Uh, the duration of my stay here. So, um, I'll just cut to the chase. First of all, today is day seven of my water only fast. It's Amazing to me that I have not eaten anything in seven days. Maybe more amazing that I feel great, have felt great all along, never had any problems whatsoever of any kind. There are many things that you can feel when you're fasting, different, different experiences, different symptoms, and um, I've felt I've had no issues whatsoever. Um, so with the exception, as I mentioned yesterday, I was a little kind of crampy and oh, kind of over it after I did a really intense lecture. but. I have been doing great, and so I'm, I'm grateful, and I feel it's a, very much a success. So originally, when I talked to Goldhammer on the phone before coming here, he said, well, with your weight and height, I would only recommend a five to seven day fast, and uh, I, I accepted that at that time, but since my original you know, information about fasting, when I had watched a lot of lectures, I felt like I needed a 21 day fast. Like that's the, that's when you really get clean of stuff. Your body gets a lot of detoxification and healing done. But, uh, when he said five to seven, I'm like, Oh wow. Okay. Um, and, but I accepted it. 
So then I created this kind of secret plot along the way be between then and when I came here that, okay, I'm gonna try and push it to 10 though. And when I had my initial examination by the doctor here, Dr. Strucker, who's wonderful too, um, I told him that and he said, okay, that's the, I'll support that, let's see how you go. And it was always gonna be, let's let my, my body decide. And uh, according to my body, really, I could go the 10, I'm sure. I've lost a lot of weight since I've been here. We'll get to that in just a second. But um, I, uh, and I think I, you know, I could handle a few more days and lose a few more pounds, although I'm quite skinny. Uh, but uh, it's, it's time, time to call it for a number of reasons. And so today's day seven, that will be my, this will be my last day of water only fasting for this extended fast experience. Whew. <laughs> it's been amazing and I'm grateful and glad I did it, zero regrets. And, uh, and I don't regret you know, terminating the fast at this point and transitioning back into foods either. Uh, there's a wonderful refeeding program uh, that I'll get to that in a minute as well. But so let's, um, Let's just go through some of the reasons that I'm, I'm ready to call it. Uh, I, for most of my adult life, being full grown adult, I've weighed 185 pounds. At six foot three, 185 pounds. Everyone's always felt I was skinny. And since I've been eating mainly plant-based foods for the last two years, and I've largely cut out sugar, largely cut out flour, wheat, um, I've been down to 165 much lower than ever, lower than high school kind of thing. Uh, and I, I was never overweight, and I'm, that's not me. Um, so 185 most of my life, 165 the last couple of years, eating mostly plant-based. And now that I've been fasting for seven days, and I already started losing weight just coming here because of the food they serve. Now I weigh 151 pounds at six foot three. So that's... That's your maybe enough right there reason to say, okay, um, let's just go ahead and get back on food. I was gonna, I'm setting a target of 148. I was willing to go down to 148 because of the body mass index and how that calculated out. It still seems safe. Um, and I'm sure it is safe, but I'm fine. I'm, I'm, I'm skinny. Uh, I certainly have no bloating whatsoever anymore. Well, I haven't eaten for seven days and learned maybe a couple things about that as well. Hopefully I'm gonna get the, the bloating thing under control at this point. And hopefully the reset and the flush out helped with that. So there's that. Another big reason why I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and transition back to food after seven days now is that I am a heck of a lot healthier than I thought I was. I have, as I've mentioned in previous videos, little symptoms of things here and there. And when I took it to my, my one doctor, Dr. Sokic, who does uh, Chinese medicine and American medicine, she felt that, well, Evan, given everything you've told me, you likely have a, an overbloom of candida. Candida is a, a fungus, a bacteria that we all have. And if it's an overbloom, then it can cause you all kinds of these symptoms. So I, I really felt that what I needed was a gut biome reset and to, to flush out any of these uh, fungal stuff. But they do extremely thorough blood tests here. And I even did stool samples here to take a look at all of that. And turned out I don't have a candida overbloom at all, according to the blood tests according to the stool samples. I don't have any type of parasites. I don't, my cholesterol is 140. My blood glucose is 74. My A1C, which represents the glucose over a three month period is five, which is so low, nowhere near pre-diabetic. So, and the, the indicators of inflammation were like nothing. So I don't even have inflammation. So. Obviously, whatever I've been doing is working. I've been doing okay. I don't need to feel guilty about the little ice cream I have once in a while or sneaking off for a cookie because I'm not doing it all the time like I did in, back in the city when it's temptation is everywhere. Um, I just, I don't hit those sugars as hard, nearly, nearly as hard as I used to. It's, a, it's, a, it's more of a rare treat. So what I've been doing is working. I didn't necessarily need a long, long, long extended fast. 
And for the other two things that I have going on, the arthritis and the lung condition, I feel like I would need a, a 21 full on fast to be able to work through some of those if, if I was gonna use fasting to help them. And I just can't go 21 anyway, given my weight. So those are, those are kind of the main reasons why I feel, nah, it's time, let's call it at seven and transition back to eating. Um, I, I certainly feel that I very likely have achieved what I came here to do mainly, which was to get that cleanse, detoxify and heal and kickstart the healing for my lung. Lung is something I want to heal. I am not haven't done any smoking of anything for over five months. So now that I'm not causing any more damage, it's being, being healed and rectified. So I think it's pretty good for my first extended fast anyway. Uh, the most I've done before is a couple 36 hour fast where you basically just go one full day without food. You eat at night, you don't go, you don't eat all day, and then you eat the next morning. And those times in the morning, I would just feel crazy, ravenous, and lightheaded, and drag. I could barely get down the stairs to do breakfast, and then I would just want to pull something out of the fridge and eat it right away. It's time to eat again, yeah! But I didn't know anything about fasting. I didn't prepare. One of the big keys of fasting is the preparation. I'll get into that in, the, in a few minutes, though. So this has been a great, great fast, a great fasting experience, no issues whatsoever. So uh, another big reason why I need to get out of here is people are relying on me at home. My dad actually went into the hospital while I've been here. My brother had to come up from LA and look after him. So thank you, Doug. I know he's been watching these videos as well as my dad. Hi, dad. I hope you're feeling better. So, um, and, and that's the reason why I didn't go do the original idea for a fast was to go down to Costa Rica and do a whole month, fast for 21 days, refeed for a week, spend the whole month in a nice, total, tranquil, tropical environment and do the fast there. But um, I, I wouldn't get on a plane and go that far from home because of my responsibilities here. So it's, it's time to, to go ahead and go home now anyway, even though I'm only, you know, short distance of drive from home. So, now that I have this experience to draw from, I can fast on my own too. And I've, I've done a lot more studying about fasting. They have all these DVD videos they give you when you check in here, like 40 of them. And we've watched a bunch, so I've learned so much more about fasting, about nutrition, and all that stuff. And I've been reading this book, The um, Complete Guide to Fasting. So, I'm, I'm ready to go it on my own now, I think. Anyway, I'm going to do some intermittent fasting, probably like a you know, weekly, maybe a couple times a week, I'll do an intermittent fast where you eat an early dinner, you don't eat breakfast, and a little bit late lunch. So you could go from like 6 p.m. till maybe 1 or 2 p.m. the next day without eating. And that's, that's a good chunk of time that lets your body do a whole bunch of interesting metabolic resets and get some work done for you. So I'll do that. And then a time or two a year, I'll do an extended fast on my own, two, three days without food. And I know how to do it now. I know how to ease into it, eat perfectly for a week or two before. Start with one day of juice only, then have your water only days, and then ease back in. First day juice only, then raw, and then come back. So I'm gonna give that a try on my own. And, and I know what the supervision is here. They're checking your vitals every day. They're asking, are you lightheaded? Are you nauseous? How's your urination? Have you had any bowel movements? I get it. I can monitor some of those things on my own. So um, I've, I've just learned so, so much here. And, uh, and, and it's great, I'm gonna carry that with me. So I wanted to talk about some of the lessons that I've learned here, just some, because there's so much to learn here. There's so much to learn here. I've, I've had these amazing epiphanies and uh, I'm going to be moving forward in 2020, the year of clear vision with some clear vision, which is great. So, um, like I said, proper preparation is, is vital to the comfort of fasting. Um, many people complain about the fast. It's miserable and they're taking it really hard and they have acid reflux or they cramps and lightheadedness, all the different things that I didn't have. They probably didn't do the full on proper preparation. So that's one thing I, I get. Prepare. Um, another big, big one that I learned and this was in a lecture by Doug Lyle, who co-wrote the book, The Pleasure Trap, who is a psychologist here that many people see, make appointments with him and see. And he just, oh, he's got some powerful lectures. 
but he talks about lowering the bar. If you set the bar too high for yourself, you won't achieve it. And then you'll get discouraged and then you'll just say, screw it. And you'll go back to the worst habits. And so if you don't set the perfect standard, but you set a reasonable standard, now you might meet it. Now you might be patting yourself on the back and feel good about what you did do, what you were able to accomplish. So that was a big, big thing I learned. And, and, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to carry that with me and I'm going to look at this 90, 10, you know, I can even, they talk about the 80, 20 rule. I'm going to try for a 90, 10. And, and then if I dip into the 80, 20 range, I still won't feel too bad. And I don't think I'm going to go to the 30 range because we eat really, really, really well at home and we don't keep sugar in the house. And I make plant-based foods all the time. So this is only when you're eating out, or, you know, maybe you do run by and just have that ice cream or something. And one thing I, I figured out to really help me too is instead of going to the ice cream shop and having the full on sugar and um, cream, you know, dairy cream ice cream, is just go ahead and bring some into the house. Only a pint, but I'm going to get some good, you know, coconut milk, vegan ice cream, um, maybe maple syrup sweetened. That's, that's a lot better than the full-on ice cream parlor ice cream. So I'll, I'll get some of that once in a while, bring it home, and on that, that night when we shop, I'll serve it to three people, so that already depletes the pint way down. So the worst I can do, even if I binge, is pff, a little third of a pint of ice cream, of a you know healthier ice cream. So I've I got some little tricks up my sleeve that I'm prepared for there, but I think I can handle 90% super healthy, you know, my goal type eating. But again, whatever I was doing before must have been working because all my blood reports were beautiful. No issues. Kidneys, great. Liver function, great. So pretty pleased with just learning that. So, uh, let's see, any other lessons that I learned the easy way? Well, let's move to the hard way. So the ones I, I, I learned the hard way, um, the one rule that I broke, and I've mentioned this, was that using my brain too much. I really felt that I did learn before coming here, when you fast water only for an extended period of time, chill out. That's why you go to Costa Rica. You just lie around in a hammock and you attend one lecture about fasting and food and nutrition a day, and you lie around. Maybe take a gentle walk through the, the food forest, the garden. But I'm here with all these wonderful, you know, hard to resist lectures by these incredibly brilliant people, and I want to go and attend them and take advantage of them while I'm here. But they're intense, and you, I focus, and I really get into it, and I think about it, and they spur ideas in my own brain. And it took its toll yesterday. It was just a little too much. So that's, um, that's the one thing I learned the hard way. But I also learned that that's who I am. I'm a thinker and a creator. So, um, you know, maybe I should stick with what I do and, and not come and try and do week long or more fasts and be tempted by fascinating lectures, but fast in my own home, in the comfort of my own home for a few days and not have people come around and truly just be mellow. So that's a good one that I learned, albeit you know, a little uncomfortable for one evening. I'm fine. I, I dealt with that. And then uh, the other thing I learned, you know, kind of the hard way is that it, this isn't necessarily a panacea where, you know, magically on day X, whatever that magic day is, boom, all your ailments are vanished. So I, I, I was maybe shooting for the moon to think, oh, I'm going to heal my arthritis and uh, and heal all my all these little skin conditions and this and that. No, that was probably too much to expect. But cool. I shot for the moon and I got up to the stars. I'll take it. So I'm, uh, I'm going to move forward. Reinvigorated. Purposeful. Determined. Committed. 
and I'm confident that I can do well, you know, with the 90-10 and, and let, let the 10%, even if I have to throw caution completely to the wind, do it. If I can get vegan and, and not too crazy st stuff out there in the world, all the better. And if it's just time to indulge and, you know, maybe we, we, have, we order one dessert for five people and I have a spoonful or two. Not going to kill me. Not going to throw off my tests like crazy. And not going to, you know, really harm the body in too severe a way. People are getting really sick with these chronic metabolic syndromes because every meal, every day, they're having salt, fat, and sugar, salt, fat, and sugar, meat, dairy, salt, fat, sugar, meat, dairy, salt, fat, sugar. They're having them all the time. You have bacon and eggs for breakfast, cheeseburger for lunch, steak and fries for dinner, or even a fish, fish dinner. It's, it's, it's just too much. So we eat breakfast at home every day and it's super healthy. We eat lunch at home most every day and it's super healthy. And we eat, really we eat home all the time, but if it's time to go out to dinner, especially to be social, and that's the bottom line of this is we're an ultra social animal and it's a hostile environment, especially here with the standard American diet and the rich foods, hyper rich foods that restaurants serve in order to make you go, mm, this is so good. And then you'll want to keep eating there and rave about it. And word of mouth is what sends people there. So I, uh, we learned in hotel and restaurant management school that if someone goes to your restaurant and they have a good experience, uh, they'll tell maybe three people about it. But if someone goes to your restaurant and has a bad experience, they'll tell 10 people about it. We love to gossip and we love to bitch and kvetch and we, uh, if it bleeds, it leads and we want to get things off our chest and get catharsis and we want to warn people, don't go there, it's terrible. So it's just the way we are. It's, it's, it's part of our nature as an ultra social tribal creature. So um, since nobody eats this way, how many, ask yourself seriously, how many people do you know who eat 100% plant-based, whole food, no salt, no oils of any kind, and no sugar or sweeteners. I only know one, it's Dr. Goldhammer, <laughs> and he's amazing. But he's created this environment around himself. So he's insulated, he has community, he has socialization, he has a purpose in life, he has a job, he has a foundation, he's doing good work for the world. So, and he has a, a dining room here that has food every day, 24 hours a day. So he can do it. But if you want to be social in the real world, not this insulated microcosm, you're going to have to compromise if you go out. Go to someone's home, you can't expect them to, to cook that way for you. I don't even cook that way at home. I, I, and again, since I'm so healthy according to the blood tests and how I feel, I, um, I'm, I'm doing, doing okay the way I am. I use a little bit of oil, a little bit of salt, no sugar, no wheat. So. What I've concluded is that, yeah, you can eat healthily, completely. You can be 100% perfect health in your diet, and you'll be alone. But that's not our nature. We're ultra social. So we'd rather put poison in our body, harm ourselves, and risk or almost ensure cancer, diabetes, heart disease, strokes, the whole bit, to be social. So I'm finding the balance. I'm going to find the balance where I can stay as healthy as I can and still be social when it's time to be social. Not make bland, boring food when people come over. Make them something they'll like, but is healthier than what they usually eat. And when we go out, we'll, we'll look for vegan places or vegan options. And uh, we'll, in general, more opt for the veggie burger than the beef burger. And, um, and I'm not going to beat myself up if I have the full-on beef burger once in a while. I've never called myself a vegan. I just eat mainly plant-based. And I, I prefer that for my health, and I prefer it for the animals, and I prefer it for the planet and the environment. So, you know, it's, it's, it's way better. I may make a dent, you know, a tiny dent in, in the problems, but I'm doing a lot of work for the solution. So I have a very appropriate balance in my life. And that's something that I advocate, is think of the balance in your life. And if you're throwing tons, tons, tons of good stuff, good stuff, good stuff on the scale, yeah, okay, you do have some shitty things over here. It's still nowhere near going to offset all the good you've done. So focus on the good. Do right for yourself. Do right for others. Do right for the world a lot. And then you won't worry if you do something that's not as cool, not as um, tactful or, 
or um, you know non-harming and all that. So that's basically where I stand today. On day seven, my last day of water only fasting. Tomorrow is going to be juice only for my birthday. So I don't have to drink water only on my birthday. That's cool. Uh, I was going to put a candle on a glass of water, but now I get to put it in a nice juice. They make beautiful, freshly pressed juices here. Fruit juices, um, vegetable juices, you know, like a celery or celery and apple or celery and beet and carrot or uh, watermelon and ginger. So I'm really looking forward to the juices tomorrow, I can tell you for sure. Uh, and uh, now that I know I'm coming to the conclusion and I'm going back to transitioning, I am excited to to do that, enjoy that. And um, I've got some friends coming up for lunch here at True North tomorrow. You can have visitors here and they can eat in the dining room. Uh, you pay a little fee at the desk, no big deal. Um, so we're gonna go in there and they can eat from the buffet. It's all buffet here. And I'll have my big pint of juice. And when you get a juice or a smoothie, they fill that pint to the rim. So I'll have that and I've been told Sip slowly. Take like an hour to drink your one juice. Okay, I get four juices. They bring them at 8 a.m., noon, 2 p.m., and 5 p.m., or 3 p.m., 5, something like that. So I'm looking forward to the juices tomorrow. And then the next day is raw only, no dressing, just fruit and salad. And then you get into raw plus steamed, simple steamed vegetables, uh, and then uh, and like sweet potatoes and soups thin soups and then and then the next day you expand it a little bit more you can now eat some grains and oatmeal and stuff like that and that's for two days and then beyond that it's unrestricted um, although they recommend eating salt oil sugar free plant-based whole food they suggest 50 years <laughs> I, uh, I I'm just not going to attempt the impossible I it really Dr. Lyle gives you permission to lower that bar and just do do what feels right. And I feel like 2020, the year of clear vision, I'm, I'm going to do what's right for me. I'm not going to um, shoot for perfection. I certainly won't hold anyone else to any kind of standard near that. And I'll just be grateful for what I accomplish. And I wish that for you as well. I'm here to inspire, educate, and share. So much love, so much appreciation for sharing this story and experience with you and for tuning in and giving me some of your time to take a look at something that might help you and i really hope it does so go with love and i'll be back this isn't the last you've heard from me